Let's take a look at some of the solutions for checkpoint test 1. We're going to start with question 2a. We are asked in question 2 to solve for the variable. Okay, so we are asked to solve the equations. Question 2a is a quadratic equation because we have an x squared and we need to solve it by first getting it into standard form. So we need to minus 5x and minus 3 from both sides. This equation does factorize. You need to be careful with the factors here because both combinations could potentially give you 5. You need to just be careful with the signs. So 2 and 1 and 3 and 1. 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, those will give you negative 5, but only if they are both negative. So only if the 3 is negative and the 2 is negative. But a negative times a negative won't give you a negative. So therefore, that is actually not the correct way around. We actually need to have 2 times 3 and 1 times 1, and then we need to have negative 6 add 1 in order to get negative 5. So our factors will be 2x plus 1, and x minus 3. Just remember to always check that your outers and inners and your lasts do give you your middle and your last term. So therefore, we can conclude that x is negative a half or that x is positive 3. Right, the next question we're going to have a look at is number 2e. Number 2e is an inequality, and remember that to solve an inequality, we want to compare it to zero, because we're looking to find where that thing is positive and where it's negative, and zero is your point at which everything left of zero is negative and everything right of zero is positive. So we need to first get this into standard form, so we're going to add 2a squared to both sides. And in order to decide where it's going to be less than zero, I need to find out where it's actually going to be equal to zero. So we need to factorize this expression in order to find our critical values. So the factors of 2 and 21 that will give you negative a will be 2a minus 7 and a plus 3. That means your critical values are negative 3 and 7 over 2. If we think of this expression as being a quadratic function, a parabola, we know that everything above the x-axis gives us positive values for the function. Everything below gives us negative values for the function. And we know that the intercept points are negative 3 and 7 over 2 because that's where this equation would in fact be equal to 0. And if you make the function values equal to 0, you are finding your x-intercepts. We are looking for this thing where it is less than 0. So we want it below the x-axis, which is over here. So that means that our solution for x will lie in between negative 3 and 7 over 2. Okay, let's take a look now at question 3. Negative 3 over 4 is a root of the equation 0 is equal to 12y squared minus 7y plus c. Determine the value of c and the other root. Okay, so there's actually two things to do here. We first need to find the value of c, and we need to find the other root. And remember that the word root just means a solution to that equation. So in order to find the value of c, we can use the fact that we know that one of the answers to the equation is negative 3 over 4, and we can substitute that in place of y. If we punch this part of the equation into our calculator, you will get 12, and you now minus 12 from both sides, and you get c to be equal to negative 12. So therefore, your equation will be 0 is equal to 12y squared minus 7y minus 12. We know that one of the solutions was negative 3 quarters, because they told us that in the very beginning. So one of these brackets needs to give us negative 3 quarters when we solve it, which means it must be 4y plus 3. Because if you equate 4y plus 3 to 0, if we just do it up here, you get 4y is equal to negative 3, and you divide both sides by 4, you get y is negative 3 quarters. Okay, if we now want to figure out our other factor, 4 times 3 will give you the 12y squared, and 3 times 4 will give you the 12. It must be negative 12, so you know that it must be 3y minus 4. So therefore, y is negative 3 quarters, which we already knew, or y is equal to 4 thirds. And finally, we're going to look at the simultaneous equation question 5. 2a plus 3b minus 4 is equal to 0. Let's call that equation 1. And then b is equal to a half a squared plus a half a minus 3. 
you are already given the value of b in this equation, so there's no rearranging to do. We can simply start off by substituting equation 2 into equation 1. So wherever we have a b, so we're going to have a b over there, that's the structure of equation 1. Instead of b, we're going to have a half a squared plus a half a minus 3. If we multiply into the brackets, and if we um, now multiply the whole equation through by positive 2, that will get rid of the 2 in the denominators. Squared plus 3a minus 9 minus 4 is minus 13, and minus 13 times 2 is um, negative 26 is equal to 0. And if we simplify and arrange into standard form, we get 3a squared plus 7a minus 26 is equal to 0. That will factorize into 3a plus 13 and a minus 2. So therefore, a will be negative 13 over 3, or a will be positive 2. Substitute back into equation 2 to solve for b, and you get b is 38 over 9, or b is equal to 0.